Hello and welcome to Wednesday of Passion Week. And what a holy week it has been. I pray that the reflection of Jesus this week has been a blessing to your life and to your heart. Today, Wednesday, is a day of adoration and praise, of loving Jesus with all that we have. And the scripture that we find uh, today is in Mark chapter 14, verses 1 through 11. Today, Jesus continues to teach throughout the temple courts, winning even more souls to the kingdom. What an amazing feat, if you ask me. All the while, the Pharisees are still attempting to plot and mostly discredit Jesus. But they figure they can't discredit him, so they instead go into the secret and they begin to plot to destroy and deceive Jesus in a different way. Today is the day where the Jewish people would uh, celebrate the festival of unleavened bread. They would all come together. And while this festival is going on, the Pharisees decided we're not going to take him now for that may cause a riot, but we'll take him in secret. However, at the end of the day for Jesus, he finds himself in a house of a familiar face, Simon the leper, who Jesus had touched and healed his, his entire body, that he may now enjoy this festival with others. And Jesus is in his home at night, and this story unfolds before us, found in Mark 14, 1 through 11. I want to read it to you. If you don't mind, it says this, Now the Passover and the festival of unleavened bread were only two days away, and the chief priests and the teachers of the law were scheming to arrest Jesus secretly and kill him. But not during the festival, they said, or the people may riot. While he was in Bethany reclining at the table in the house of Simon the leper, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. And some of those present were saying indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages and the money given to the poor. And they said, rebuking her harshly, Leave her alone, said Jesus. Why are you bothering her? She has done a beautiful thing to me. The poor you will always have with you, and you can help them anytime you want, but you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare for her, uh, prepare for my burial. Truly, I tell you, Wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus to them. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money, so he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. You know, this story is one that is absolutely beautiful. It, it reminds me, back in 1 Samuel uh, a scripture that says, then Samuel ministered before the Lord. Minister, he gave to, he proclaimed towards God. And that's what is happening here with this woman. I've always paid more attention though to the alabaster jar. And today in reading this, something else stuck out to me. You see, there's two people that have experienced the touch of God. Simon the leper who has been healed in this woman who has experienced the grace and mercy of God and wanted to give back to him what she could. And that's what stuck out to me. Verse eight says this, she did what she could. She did what she could. Right before that, it says everyone in the home was, was saying these harsh words about what she was doing how she was wasting this beautiful, refined bottle of perfume. And instead of selling it to get the money from it, from it instead she broke it and washed Jesus with, with this perfume. You know, I think back at my own life and how often it's easy for me to wish I could do more or that I could give God the best praise in the whole wide world. 
But here in this passage, you see this very expensive perfume being poured out to Jesus. And Jesus' words towards this woman is she has done what she could. You are so easy to be Simon the leopard in this, to be his disciples who are surrounding Jesus in this moment, looking at a way of worship or a way of praise as a waste. That's not what God is intended or looking forward to. That's not what the Bible teaches. Yet deep within our souls, we have this longing to give God our all because he deserves it. This woman has experienced the grace and mercy of Jesus, just like me. I have been forgiven and it's been forgotten by my Lord and Savior more often than I could even count. And it's amazing to know that the love of Jesus is for me and for you. And here in this passage, we see that she did what she could. I want to encourage you this week as we continue to embark on Passion Week, learning more about where Jesus is and what he is doing. I pray that today, if you can take this challenge, that you take whatever you can and give it to the Lord. Maybe it's so small and tiny, but to God, it will minister before him. I pray that you in your faith can continue to love God with whatever you have. It is such a beautiful thing to give to God praise and worship, to freely become undignified in the presence of the Holy Spirit, which Jesus sent to dwell within your heart. Thank you for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow.